As you know, there's not a whole lot you need to do as far as service and maintenance on a Tesla. My 2018 Model 3 long range rear wheel drive is almost three and a half years old and has 41,000 miles. Back a few months ago in June, I replaced the cabin filters. Tesla suggests to replace them every two years, but I do it annually since my area has a heavy pollen season. Today I will check the fluids under the service panel inside the frunk, specifically the brake and coolant fluids. I previously tested them back when the car was at two years and just under 27,000 miles. So basically, I've added another 14,000 miles since then. The fluids in the Model 3 or Y should last quite a few years. So this check for the coolant isn't that necessary. First up is the coolant check. I need to remove the intake for the HVAC system to get access underneath. There are a number of tabs that go around the top of it and it pops right out. The coolant tank is just to the left of the 12 volt battery. Here I'll get a test strip ready to use. The strips that I have offer dual testing for the coolant and brake fluids. Each test is on either end of the strip. And for coolant, I use the side specified for it and it has two pads on it. Twist off the cap and place it aside. I put the test strip into the fluid and then I shake off the excess and wait 30 seconds. Comparing the result to the test card shows that the color is closest to the 60% marker, which is pretty good. Don't leave the cap open too long. We don't want any contaminants to get into the reservoir. Place the cap back on and tighten it. And then I place the HVAC intake back onto the opening and snap it in. Now moving over to the right side of the 12 volt battery, you will find the brake fluid reservoir. This is a fluid that may break down over time by absorbing water into the system. So it's a time thing and not necessarily how many miles you drive. Many manufacturers suggest replacing every two to three years. I was told by my mobile service tech that Tesla tests these fluids the same way that I'm doing right now. I would use the other end of the test strip that I previously used on the coolant. Now I'll remove the brake fluid cap and place it aside. Place the test strip into the reservoir for a few seconds. Then we take it out and put the cap back on. Use the other side of the test card. And how did it do? Comparing the color on the test strip to the colors on the comparison card shows that the fluid is still in great shape. It's somewhere between the first and second bar, which is between zero and 10 parts per million corrosion level. As with the coolant fluid, make sure to quickly put the cap on so you don't get any contaminants into the tank. I'll be testing the brake fluid annually. Now that I'm done with under the hood, I can place the service panel back on again. Let's move around to the wheels, tires, and brakes. If you have a cold winter and snow is common, it's a good idea to check your brake pads and calipers so that they are working correctly and to make sure the pads are not disintegrating, which can happen with a lot of salty road slush common up north. Sometimes gunk can also get into the calipers and keep the pads from pressing against the rotors. Sometimes they even get stuck close to the rotors causing abnormal wear. Where I live, I have fairly mild winters, so I can expect my brake pads to easily last 80 to over 100,000 miles over time. Yeah. 
If you hear noises when going over speed bumps or when turning, you may have issues with your suspension. It is a common problem to have the ball joints dry out on the upper control arm. Tesla will replace them under warranty, so pay attention and get this done before the 4-year 50,000 mile warranty ends. Another suspension issue that can occur is loose bolts on the lower control arms, as shown here. I check my tires for even wear and tread depth. I usually do this every 3 to 4,000 miles. I do measurements on three areas of the tires, usually the left side, the top, and the right side, and then across all of the treads. If the front and rear tires are more than 1 32nd of an inch, then I rotate. I averaged all of the measurements, and here's what I got. 4.6 for the front left, 5.7 for the front right, 5.4 for the rear left, and 5.5 for the rear right. The front left was previously on the rear for the last rotation and oddly wore more than the other tire. Now that it's up front, it shouldn't wear as much, so I'm going to leave it as it is. With the other three tires around the same tread depth, I decided not to rotate the tires. By the way, these Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 3 Plus were installed in January of 2020 with an initial tread of 9 30 seconds of an inch. According to my measurements, I have about 47% of the tread remaining, which should last me another year to year and a half at the rate it is going. Not bad, probably I'll get around 34,000 miles, which is a lot better than the 23,000 miles I got on the original MX M4 tires. I do need to adjust the pressure in my tires. Since the pressure varies with the temperature, if you have dropping temperatures in the fall and winter, you need to increase the pressure from the summer levels to get to the recommended level, in my case, 42 PSI. The car's pressure monitoring system shows the level at 42 PSI compared to my tire inflator, so I'll go by the car's numbers. So that wraps up this quick service update on my Tesla Model 3 with 41,000 miles. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.